all of the TaylorMade Sim 2 driver stock shaft options with us today. We're going to hit some shots with each stock shaft and see what TrackMan tells us about each one. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club footer here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today we're in the tour van and we're going to be testing out the stock shaft options with the TaylorMade Sim 2 driver. Uh, of course, there are the three Sim 2 driver models and then we've got the all the is it five stock shaft offerings from TaylorMade. Um, so of course, provide uh, the, 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 we'll start that of course over. Of course, selecting the right golf shaft is probably the next in line uh, behind the club head in a club fitting here at Second Swing. And so, Thomas, um, I know we've kind of described these already a little bit in detail with uh, our previous video, uh, breaking down all the stock shaft offerings. But in our test today, what do you think we're going to see? Well, we're actually going to hit the golf shafts. We were just talking about what you should see with general trends. Yeah. Now we're going to hit them. So we've got a wide range from lighter golf shafts. So we have like the Air Speeder, which is typically fit for more of the Max D head, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be around about 45 grams in weight. So it's definitely on the lighter end of the spectrum. And then at the other end of the spectrum, we've got the RDX Smoke Black, which is going to be around about 70 grams in weight. Mm -hmm. So first off, weight yeah. is going to be a, a big influence. These golf shafts are ranging from high trajectory to mid trajectory to low trajectory. But keep in mind that general trends. It's important yeah. to test the golf shafts out yourself because it always is going to be player dependent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and so we'll have Thomas be our player today to hit some golf shots, hit some bombs with the TaylorMade Sim 2 head, and we'll see what, they, what TrackMan tells us about these golf shafts. Are you ready to do that? Let's do it. Thomas, you've got the Airspeeder 45 gram to start with, it looks like, uh, the lightest of our stock shaft options here. Um, before you know, hitting any shots, uh, I'm sure you anticipate that to be a little bit more erratic than the other ones. Yeah, I mean, if I'm just going to kind of go like this right here, I can definitely feel that it's, actually it's not too bad, but it's uh, definitely going to be less stable compared to mm -hmm. the other four golf shafts that we're going to test. Weight, and then also material as well. Mm -hmm. so. And then, so to clarify, all these stock shafts um, are either stiff or extra stiff in flex. Um, the Hazardous Smoke RDX and I believe the Tensai AV Blue are both extra stiff. And the, the other three are going to be a stiff flex, I believe. So, yep. um, all right, we've got, we got the club set up. Let's hit some bombs. Let's do it. I got the uh, TaylorMade Sim 2 8 degree head. Oh, the 8 degree head. Okay, yep. interesting. Just to keep my, uh, my height down as much as I possibly mm -hmm. can. Probably necessary with uh, the various stock shafts we're going to be hitting today. That was hit well. That was smoked. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and Thomas's new stock shaft. Is Check out the... that club speed. <laughs> yeah, you're up yeah. there. So well, a lot that's, of that's fresh off of some <laughs> overspeed training. So <laughs> there we're at it. Yeah, we just we just shot a video on overspeed training, and this is kind of like yeah. right after it. So that's that's pretty impressive there. Uh, also, the lighter golf shaft is for sure helping that yes, as well of because course. lighter will give you more potential speed. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, I like to say to customers, play the lightest golf shaft that you can keep straight. Yeah. In most sense. If mm -hmm. it's too erratic, then obviously that golf shaft's a little too light. Right. Yeah. But if I hit like that every day, maybe I should play a 40 gram, five gram stiff flex shaft. But I won't hit it like that every time. That is why I don't play a golf shaft that is too light for me. <laughs> it felt like as I was coming down, like, I just could not get that club face to kind of match up. Yeah. It just felt unstable. Yeah, right that's the problem yeah. with uh, the quick tempo playing a shaft that's not quite yep. fit for you. Is the club head can't quite catch up when you kind of quickly transition downward on yeah. the downswing. Yeah, I just felt like I could not call to control the club face mm -hmm. on that thing. A lot of speed, but All right. a lot we'll, do, of we'll do one curve. more with, uh, with this golf shaft here. Pretty good. All right. Now, that is impressive. I mean, the fact that that spin rate stayed that low, I mean, look, in 1634, mm -hmm. now that's attack angle and that's the loft on the driver that's keeping that spin rate down. Mm -hmm. It's not so much the golf shaft. I'll say physics will tell you the loft, the center of gravity changes, um, the, 
and any other change you're going to make to the club head will make the biggest differences in spin and, and everything like that. Yeah. Golf shaft is important to fit a player into the right golf shaft based on their swing speed for stability reason. We'll notice yeah. that left, right, yeah. left, right. Oh, I got one straight kind of thing. So, <laughs> yeah, so this so, is a wide range. So the quick hypothesis I have is this is going to be your widest circle, but it potentially could be the farthest down, I guess, down the fairway or down the golf course as yep. well. So interesting to see that. But you did get a couple that were just smoked, nuked out there uh, that didn't, you know, stray left or right. But then I think your misses left or right are pretty significantly left and right. So yeah, um, it's important to get fit for the right golf shaft. I would say air speeder, golf shaft, you're looking at those players that have probably that swing speed, 90 miles an hour, kind of around that, around that mark with their, with their driver, not a guy that's got 117 miles right. an hour. 90, yeah. even maybe 80 to 90 is kind of a good right. range for, for this particular golf shaft. Okay, well, let's move on. Let's do maybe, um, we'll do the Ventus Blue here. Okay. It's just three in a row, same thing. Yeah, interesting. Aim 20 yards left and hit a, hit a block fade, and I'll be good. <laughs> Numbers are good, though, overall. I mean, that spin rate is kind of interesting. Yeah, it's staying low. It's staying low. So again, eight degrees of loft on a driver is going to help me do that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't like that golf shot. It, I've played that golf shot for too many years in my life. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's, it's more stable. Yeah than the first golf shaft, but not stable enough for me. Right, and yeah, yeah so it's clear the trend emerges where you can't quite catch that club face up, um, and the result is a miss to the right with yep. the face a little bit open at impact. But now, keep in mind this is going to be player dependent. Right. It's because I have a faster tempo is why I can't get that face square at impact. Mm -hmm. If you have a smoother tempo with a lighter golf shaft, it's going to be easier to think that, turn that thing over. So generally speaking, most of the time, a lighter golf shaft is a little easier to turn over. Yeah. Once again, there's trends, but it's player dependent. Yeah, yeah. So you are a player with a quick transition, and that's why things are, you know, that's why your miss here is to the right yep. with a, uh, a golf shaft that's both lighter and probably not as stiff as your swing requires. So the, there's the, I mean, there's a quick look at the numbers, right? A little bit lower club speed, kind of a heavier shaft. Um, result is a little bit lower ball speed, but ultimately, um, you know, we're seeing kind of what we'd expect so far, I think. So. Yeah. Um, now we can move on. We'll try the, we'll do the Kurokage Silver uh, 60 gram. Sounds good. Definitely more stable. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is where I see a big jump from the Ventus Blue to the Kurokage. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, a little more stable golf shaft. And then talking about what, um, what club head typically these fit into. The air speed is more for your kind of your, your max, max D head. Mm -hmm. While the Ventus and the Kurokage is going to be more into the, into the max head. Yep. Um, but this is going to be your mid trajectory, where where the Ventus Blue is going to be more kind of mid high trajectory. Okay. Yeah. That was a little use, use the error on that one, but it uh, yeah, a little maybe a little more stable than the last one mm -hmm. um, overall. Feels, you know, just a tad heavier okay. as, as well. It is which, which heavier, I do like. So. Yep. Um, yep. Interesting though. Yeah. I mean, there's still a little bit of that trim. You can see it kind of gradually moving over a little bit more left. You got a couple that you're really straightened out, maybe with a tiny bit of a draw actually on yep. those, but still that trend tendency to maybe leave that face a little bit open. So for you, something a little more stiff, more stable is still needed, which is mm -hmm. where we can move up. We can try the, the Tenzai AB Blue now. Sounds good. So. Interesting, Thomas. You, uh, I can see the logo face up on that golf shaft. Um, what uh, you know? Do you notice that? So that's important that you brought that up because a lot of times players, especially lefties, may find that they have a right-handed tip in their in their golf shaft. So this is our fitting shaft that we have. It is actually a left-handed tip. So for me to match this up to be at the standard lie angle at eight degrees aloft, I needed to flip this 180 degrees. So some little fitting insight here with tailor-made tips is if you have a left-handed tip and you're a right-handed golfer, you need to flip that tip around 180 degrees to make it work with regards to specs. Now that's important if you're going to make adjustments in loft because if you try and adjust your loft lower, if you are a right-handed golfer and you have a left-handed tip in there, 
right. it actually means higher. Yeah. So you're actually closing the face four degrees and actually increasing the loft as opposed to opening the face four degrees and decreasing the loft. Yeah. So absolutely always, and especially if you are buying clubs um, used or even when you're getting them custom fit, make sure that you double check that that is the right tip mm -hmm. that is in, in, your, in your club, especially if you're doing a, a shaft swap or if you're swapping golf shafts out. That's going to be very, very important because that's going to make a huge difference in, sure. in the direction yeah. the player hit. So yeah. that's just why. So it's facing that way because I had flipped it 180 degrees okay. to match up with the others. Got it. Yeah. So, so far this shaft definitely feels more stable. It's kind of still kind of in that, in that mid trajectory with regards to the, the golf shaft. I actually have never really hit a Tenzai shaft that well, and it's just a feel thing. Yeah. So talking about how being player dependent with golf shafts, that's why it's important to test them out, because some golf shafts for people, they just maybe don't feel mm -hmm. perfect. We noticed the first one was a little right, this one was a little bit left there. Yeah. Um, that's user error for sure. Just, you know, in my hands, you know, Tell the you know, tell your club fitter when you're in a it's, fitting. Yeah. If this doesn't feel right, don't. It hit is. It. I mean, yeah. that's a huge component of the fittings here is making sure the look and the feel and the um, I mean, for lack of a better term, emotions about that particular golf shaft, golf club head, that matters. And yep. so making sure that the golfer is comfortable with that is uh, really the top priority in, in the fittings here. Yep. And that felt better, like golf swing wise. There you go. There's just something about this golf shaft. We're all, we're all mental golfers. That's, that's it. Oh, yeah. like we like, we find something we like, we're going to stick with that. It is interesting how disappointing a 298 yard carry is for you now. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that, uh, say that louder. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm serious. Like you used to be pumped to get 280 carry and now we're at 298 and you're disappointed. I am actually kind of disappointed in that one. Seriously. <laughs> All right, well, Thomas, you had maybe a couple, one kind of far left, one uh, far right, but um, well, overall, let's just, you know, what do you, you think about that, that golf shaft? You kind of mentioned how it's maybe a little bit more stable. It's definitely more stable. Just, I just... Just not comfortable it's with just, that? It's just, yeah. you know, feel-wise. That's a mental thing. It just didn't feel smooth enough for me to feel confident with it. You know, the first couple yeah. of swings, right, left, and then I, after that, I kind of found, found my swing a little bit. Yeah but it just, just felt just a little bit off. Now, okay. yes, it's a little more stable. Player dependent, absolutely. It's gonna be that mid-trajectory golf shaft for the, for the sim driver. It just, just seemed just a little bit off for me feel-wise. Okay. And that's important to bring up when you're in club fitting. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, and now we can get to something that I guess my, we predict would be the best fit for you, which would be the hazardous smoke RDX black okay. here. All right, well, Thomas, we've got five shots with each stock shaft here in the Sim family. Um, you can see on the map now the trends that sort of emerged. Um, so the white circle was the Airspeeder golf shaft. Notice that um, it was the most kind of erratic, I would say, out of them all. And that's kind of what we expected, right? That's, that's, your, that's not fit for you at all. Yeah. That's probably almost uh, it's 25 grams. Uh, lighter and uh, you know the characteristics of the torque and everything just not what you need and you can see how even slight misses in your swing caused kind of an erratic uh, dispersion out there yeah I mean there's potential there was two good ones really yeah so these uh, two out here were further. just nuked and they were yeah. the longest ones of the day because that also of that helps because I had 117 miles now club <laughs> right that helps and I matched the club face up on that one yeah it happened yeah. to but then these other ones you got one kind of out here in the rough you got one your farthest right shot of the day and then you got one over here as well which with that one and then as you as you progress forward with maybe one exception but mostly that dispersion got tighter as you got into a more stiff golf shaft fit for your swing, and then also able to square it up a little bit better. Um, as you can see, they went to the uh, the next after that was the Ventus Blue. See that yellow circle out there a little bit farther right. Then the Curl Kage Silver Purple Circle a little bit straighter. Then uh, the you had the Tensei AV Blue with a couple of you know erratic swings, but mostly that trend is still going more left. And yep. then finally the Hazardous Smoke RDX, which was fit for your swing the best out of these stock shafts. You can see how stable it was and you even know those swings maybe we didn't like as much uh the the, the punishment is not nearly as severe because it's 
uh, most stable for your swing? Yeah, I think the last couple of swings when I when I was using this golf shaft, the, the smash factor had to be just a little bit less because I feel like I didn't quite hit them maybe as solid. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm getting probably I'm getting picky probably, but yeah. it just it felt like it wasn't quite in the middle. But I got away with it. It was still in the middle of the fairway, which is the right. ultimate goal when I've got driver in my hands. Mm -hmm. I want it a little far, but I want to keep it in play, and that's why I would play a lower torque, lower spinning, lower trajectory golf shaft that's going to feel really good in my hands. So what would be the, um, we'll kind of maybe close with this here. We can see all the numbers up here um, and how, I mean. Do you want to take that bottom piece down? Oh, yeah. You can see so that, you know, the numbers, it's actually pretty comparable in terms of ball speed all across, right? I mean, you, the air speeder was a little bit faster with the club speed, which results in higher ball speed, but these are pretty similar with the ball speed here. And then the spin was a little bit different throughout, but carry distance, you're right around 300 uh, most of the time. Throw rolling out to 320-ish, 30 perhaps but um, so that's what's really important here is the direction and the dispersion that is the result of the golf shaft and then I, want, I did want to ask you about so let's say someone doesn't swing as fast as you uh, as maybe sort of an average swing speed for someone in the sim um, has just smoke RDX 70 gram extra stiff what would be the downfall of playing that because we've talked about and you can see the evidence of someone playing a shaft that's too light or too flexible what would be the downfall of playing one that's too stiff or too heavy? I think it's height, and then it's once again kind of the control on the club face. For a player that doesn't swing fast enough, they're going to feel like the club is very, very heavy in their hands. And then from there, they're, you know, maybe going to have a hard time getting the ball kind of up in the air. Okay. Now, generally speaking, a stiffer, heavier golf shaft, you can hit a little bit straighter, but you're probably going to lose out a little bit of distance, whether that's carry distance or that's swing speed distance there as well. And okay. I mean, you don't want to be swinging a pole if you don't need to swing a, swing a pole. Right. It doesn't need to be, feel like it's, there's, there's no torque in that golf shaft at all. You want to have a little bit of kick there. You want to feel like it's, it's mm -hmm. smooth in your hands. You want to feel how that's kind of presenting at impact. Yeah. I mean, there was a golf shaft today that I just did not feel comfortable with. We noticed what happened to my club speed on that one. Yep. That was the, the Tensai Blue. I feel like my club speed was the lower, one of the lowest there, yep, it was. 114.9. And then I got into a heavier golf shaft at the end, the golf shaft I felt more comfortable with. This is after swinging all, the, all these shots here, and I got kind of back out there to kind of 115 miles an hour on my kind of club speed there mm -hmm. too. So you know, generally speaking, you, you know, I wouldn't fit someone into this golf shaft unless they absolutely really loved the feel of it if they had, didn't have much speed. Yeah. It's, it's just going to be a little harder for them to feel coming through and then the vibration is going to be kind of stiffer. You don't have that speed. It's just going to mm -hmm. not feel good, good in your hands. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I just wanted to clarify that because, you know, that's the whole important part of this is making sure golfers are educated on which stock shaft from the Sim 2 drivers. It's right for them. And, you know, now that you're swinging them, I mean, you're you're hitting the ball very solid, but then you're a fast swing player. So understanding the golfers and their own swing speeds, which is right for them. And so we've done a pretty good job explaining them and, and how each one's different. I'd be curious to see just if you look on track man there, see what the height is on the, on this, on the shaft. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it had to be probably one of the lowest it was. height there. It was the well. lowest. And I know yep. you like to say, you know, just a little over a hundred feet is what you're looking for. And these yep. ones were a little bit higher. Um, I know maybe optimizing the driver would be next for you in terms of dropping that yeah. down, maybe you know lower than eight degrees of loft, but um, <laughs> or improving my attack angle or that. Yeah, no, there's ways of, of going yet. about it, but, but but you can see the heavier golf shaft there was definitely the lowest in height. So mm -hmm. if you don't have the speed to hit the ball as far up in the air, you're going to sacrifice on carry distance. Yep. Unless you're playing a golf course where the ball rolls out 50 yards which definitely is not in Minnesota. Yeah. It's definitely a lot in a lot of courses that get rain. Unless you haven't had rain in three months, it's not going to go as far. So carry distance, obviously, still going to be kind of important there yep. as well. Yep, for sure. Well, yep. um, this, was, this was good information here. Uh, really good look at the performance and all the different stock shafts for the TaylorMade Sim 2 drivers. Thomas, thank you for hitting all of the shots. And a reminder to viewers to uh, subscribe to our channel for more comparisons of products like this. Um, also come in and to our second swing stores or online with our online fitting team and uh, schedule a fitting for a new driver. We'll make sure both club head and golf shaft are fit for your swing. So once again, Thomas, thank you uh, for hitting the shots today. Not a problem.